which are both available on your own screen. We will then do our best to interact in live with you. You will also find the email address of my colleague Valerie on the meeting chat, so you can send her an email if you have any questions after the webinar. She'll be happy to get back to you as soon as she can. So please feel free to use those different paths. And one more thing, we also ask you to put your device on mute. This is to avoid any interferences. So as you know, the gender equality program is hugely important for the FIH. And it is absolutely great to see that nearly 70 persons are attending today for this meeting. It is absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much to all of you. Let me now uh, give the floor to the FIH board member, European Hockey Federation president, and member of the IOC Women in Sport Commission, Mrs. Marike Floren, who will explain you more in details the aim of this session. Thank you all, and I hope you will enjoy it. Marike, yes. you. Thank you very much, Brian, for this introduction. A warm welcome to all of you coming from all parts of the world. This is our first FIH gender equality policy uh, webinar, but it's not the last one. This webinar is actually the start of a range of webinars we will hold in the continent from February on. All these webinars will be measured to your situation, to your environment, and with the subjects that are interested for you. You have influenced what is being discussed there. It will cost time to spread the message over the world, to spread the message in your own nation, maybe. But it will happen. I'm sure of that. As FRH, we play a forefront role in gender equality. Maybe that sounds a little bit arrogant, but it is the way we is. Because already since 2010, in our statutes, it's arranged that our elected members must be four men and four women. And that's absolutely unique with no international uh, federations. In our participation worldwide, we are also more or less equal. In the umpiring, we are improving. However, in coaching, it's still a lot of work to do. What we have created within FRH is also, with our new Women in Sport Committee, is a gender equality policy. And that we are here today is an immediately consequence of this policy. For you, it's important to know who are these people in the Women in Sport Commission. Now, they are coming from each continent. We have Nation Randik from We have Philip Fernandez, he is also here, in, from Guyana. We have Scott Tupper as athlete representative from Canada. We have Elena Norman, also present from India. Ben Elgar from New Zealand. And Katie Roberts from UK. All supported by Valerie Orina, who is doing an excellent job and by me. All together, eight of us are the Women in Sport Commission. And if you have any question about what's happening, ex exactly as Brian already said, Valerie is the person you can address to. As FIH, we are aligned to IOC. IOC and President Bach are our big inspirators. And not because he's an important man, but because he brings the message in the way we like. It's a strategic choice from him to bring gender equality to the forefront of the attention. In his opinion, it's simple a matter of good governance that you pay attention to equal, gender equality. And that's important to keep in the back of your head, I think. In FIH, there are certain focus areas and we try to align with these. And I will mention them to you. Equal representation in the participation. Equal participation in the leadership. Their goal is to come to 30% end of next year. And fortunately, within FIH, in our board, we already passed that. So it's something to think about in your own NA. Take care for a safe sport. 
take care for portrayal, that women and men are equally presented in every single way in, in language and in pictures. And that the resource allocation is the same for men and for women. IOC themselves are aligned with United Nations, who is trying to achieve the same outside the world of sport. And all together, you included, we are a big network that has to spread the message and encourage men and women to work together. Because simply, together we are better, we get better decisions. 2020 is in many years of uh, perspectives, maybe not the best year. We are all suffering of the pandemic, but we all get good things out of it, I am sure. But for the gender equality, it is not that a bad year. And I think Kamala Harris is their a good uh, role model. She understands already, she's shown already now, that it's not only about herself. She understands the role model and she sings already to the next generation. And that's one of the characteristics of, of uh, gender equality. Don't think only about yourself, it's also always about the next. And now about you, because you are our audience, you are interested in the subject, and we are very grateful for that. We have invited Sarah Jukens today to be the presenter the presenter of the panel that she will introduce to you. And we have tried to uh, uh, represent in the panel all people in FIH who are important. Of course, there are more groups. I always, uh, you cannot cover everybody, but it's interesting to listen to their stories and what they think gender equality is and what it means for them. I think we are now ready for the start, but I'd like to ask you one Question, think about while you are listening, what is your own role or what your old role can be in the future? Because you realize that all of you have a role to play. All of you have the power of change in your hand and all of you can make a difference. Enjoy. Sarah, to you. Thank you very much. Marika for that overview. Um, her work with the IOC Women's Commission and the work of the FIH Women in Sport Committee, in which Mareka is chair and Valerie is secretary, is helping hockey lead the way in many aspects of gender equality. The importance of having these strong female voices at board level, whether that is in international, national or club level, is just vitally important as we strive for equality across sport. At the end of the webinar, we'll hear from Mareka again, as she outlines the ways that we can all move towards and help push our sport towards a point of equality where gender is no longer an issue and, or a limiter at any level of the game. Before we begin to address uh, issues of gender equality, however, we, we need to recognise and be aware of occasions or situations when there are gender equalities. And to reach that level of awareness, we have four guest panellists on the webinar today, as Mareka mentioned. Each of them have their own experience, both within hockey and from their own wider interactions. And also, later in this webinar, we hope to hear from many of you about your own experiences as well. So what I'm going to do now uh, is introduce each guest one by one. Uh, and as I introduce them, just ask them to say a little bit about themselves and their place within the hockey community. So first up, I'd like to introduce Maureen Craig Rosso. Uh, Maureen, hello, are you there? Give us a wave. Um, so Maureen, uh, she's a member of the FIA. Executive Board and the PAF Executive Board. She's been a top-level sports administrator um, for years and years. She won't mind me saying that. So Maureen, can you tell us just a little bit about your, your place within the hockey community? Okay, hi. Hi everybody and, and welcome. Um, and thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to talk to my fellow hockey people. Um, I've been in sport for the sport of hockey for over 30 years at different levels and um, from Art League right up to Administrator, President of Trinidad and Tobago Hockey Board, and finally moving on to the Regional, Pan American and FIH. Um, so over the years, um, I have um, interacted with, with, with a lot of variants with reference to how we treat 
um, gender equality, and particularly because in our region in the Caribbean, it's the dynamics are so different um, based on how we um, are portrayed and how we are trained. So that's just a basic Sarah of me um, from our, my perspective of coming through hockey as an administrator. Fantastic. And uh, it's going to be fascinating to hear many of your experiences later. Now, Steve, Stephen Rogers is here. Uh, he's from Ipswich in Australia. Um, and he was one of a team of umpires uh, who took control of the first FIH Pro League match to involve mixed gender umpires. Um, currently, I think you've got about 60 top level umpiring appointments to your name, Stephen. So plenty of experience there. Uh, can you just tell us a little bit about your place in the uh, in the hockey community? Um, yeah, so um, obviously um, umpire at um, the Pro League. Um, I was lucky enough that Varnery and I were teamed up to do the the first mixed gender um, appointment, which was amazing. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure what else. Um, umpire in Australia with um, all the guys and girls out here. So, yeah. Brilliant. We'll be, we'll be speaking to you about what it's like uh, with quality and down under in just a little while. Now, we're moving across to South Vanry, Vanry Ventner, who was also part of the mixed gender umpiring team. Um, I think last count, 56 top tier internationals to your name. Um, also an incredibly uh, competitive runner, as I found out to my own cost. Uh, tell us a little bit about your uh, your hockey hockey uh, experiences. Yeah. Um, yes, I am an international hockey umpire. I've been fortunate to have been added to the Pro League. And yes, uh, extremely honoured to do the first mixed gender game with Steve. Um, yeah, locally, I uh, umpire hockey, I uh, still coach hockey, um, boys and girls. And then um, I also yesterday picked up my stick for the first time in a while again. So I'm a hockey player again, which is really, really cool. Um, yeah, but uh, very involved in hockey all around. Yeah, I'm also head of sport, so very involved in the school, school discipline also. So that's me. Did you win that hockey match? Um, we drew, which is, you know, it's it's black being an umpire. You you can never win a game, you know. Uh, yeah, and we're looking forward to hearing actually from the uh, the African perspective because, um, as with PAF, as with Austra as with Oceania, there, there's a lot of diversion across the entire continent, isn't there? So that'd be good to hear. Uh, Thomas Thomas Briels is the Belgian captain. He's got an astonishing 346 international caps to his name. Um, I think it's fair to say many of the uh, many of the last hundred or so on the winning side and Thomas you were also part of that um, FIH Pro League fixture where they had mixed gender um, I believe as well um, and I think those matches were quite a good return for you because I believe you won 6-2 and 3-1 so congratulations on that tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks uh, thanks for the invitation uh, thanks for the stats as well because I didn't remember uh, <laughs> those uh, those games. Um, no, um, I'm Thomas. Um, I play hockey since I'm four years old. I uh, started playing uh, for the Belgium national team when I was 19 and uh, now I'm, I'm already 33. I, it's, I, I don't want to say it, but it's true, I'm 33. Uh, so al already 14 years with the Belgium national team um, on the highest level. And um, yeah, that's, uh, that's me. Fantastic. Well, welcome to you all. And also, I, I didn't say at the start of this, welcome to all the guests who are here today. There's lots and lots of familiar names, um, and I think we're going to have a, have a great day. Um, so what I'm going to do now, I've got some, um, some questions to draw out uh, some of the opinions and thoughts of the panellists. Um, but we're going to get a bit personal to start off with. So rather than talking about hockey necessarily, uh, what I'd like to hear about is um, a couple of your own experiences of gender equality, uh, whether that's a positive or a negative. So it could be something that uh, within your working life or within your social life or or within sort of, you know, society that you're living in, um, where you see some incidents of gender, either great gender equality or the more negative sort. And I'll, I'll, I'll head on over to, uh, let's go to Trinidad and Tobago to start with, Maureen. Can you, can you sort of just give us a, a snapshot? Sorry, Maureen, you're muted. Yeah. Are you hearing yeah. me now? I yeah. certainly am. From from um, Trinidad and Tobago and my experience as an administrator, I must say it is positive and I will tell you why. When the FIH indicated that all 
the national associations must have just one national association for hockey, not men or women. It must be merged. Um, when in fact the we did merge, there was actually more women than men on the board. And that continued where we, the women, eventually started to encourage men so that we can have a, a, a more balanced approach on the board. And that was ironic because coming from the Caribbean, where from a child, we are taught certain rules based on domestication. So women cook and the boys, they don't do the dishes, they don't cook, they don't, you know, those things are for the girls. And that's how we were trained when we were growing up. Things have changed a lot, but um, on a positive side for administration, I must say in Trinidad and Tobago. However, there's also an aspect of it where you are held to a different standard if you are a female administrator, particularly by the media, um, and you are held to a, a, a higher standard, they um, pressure you, in my opinion, um, and, and I found some of that could be quite negative. When you compare to some male administrators who can get away with things that a female um, um, administrator cannot get away with. So that would be a positive and that would be a negative I would give you as my experience. That's great. Thank you very much. And, and I think your your second point is probably something that uh, that is is quite universal. You know, I, I, I certainly from my own experience, I found or I witness women having to work that little bit hard to get the same level of, of approbation and praise that uh, that their male, male counterparts get. Um, great. If I could ask the same question, um, let, let's go to Thomas. You know, within within Europe, within Belgium. Um, incidences of where you see great or not so great gender equality. Yeah, I think uh, for me, uh, um, uh, impact, um, I, I think it started with uh, awareness. Uh, also for me, uh, two years ago, I, I got asked by the FEH also to, to participate in the, in the program uh, with, uh, um, yeah, just to create awareness about gender equality. And uh, I never, never thought about it uh, a lot before. And now I see it uh, all around me, people working really hard. Um, to, to get the girls to the same level and I see it, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a hockey player so I see it uh, uh, most of the time in, in hockey environment. If I, if I look at the, the Belgium national team and the program uh, the girls are doing now, um, comparing with uh, five years ago, um, yeah, it's a really a big change uh, in professionalism. Um, yeah, coaches are, who are full-time in the program, uh, girls uh, who are getting paid. Um, so yeah, for me, I think uh, if I look at Belgium um, and the awareness that is creating and the efforts they are doing, um, I'm not saying it's perfect yet, but I, you see that there is a lot of effort uh, putting in. And I mean that that's that's great to um, show how by raising awareness uh, you can you can make a change because you know yeah you're you're there you're a guy it it wasn't something that necessarily had been at the forefront of your mind but as campaigns got going and as people began to talk about it so you've become aware as well which has got to be a great thing that's that's great to hear um, Steve Australia yeah um, so obviously we have some quite top umpires. Um, we're in Brisbane, we're quite lucky. We've got, um, Alicia Newman. So she kind of crossed paths with us a lot on the field when we're umpiring. Um, there's also quite a few female coaches in the men's ranks now, um, which is great to see as well. Um, yeah, I'm not, I think, I think it's, it's quite a good thing. Um, Australia pr probably is getting there as well, a bit like everywhere else, I suppose. But um, yeah, it's all looking promising, I think. Fantastic. Um, and Wondery, can you give us a bit of a flavour of your sort of your encounters with uh, gender equality and inequality? Yeah, I think from from our side, we we've been really lucky that we've had the men's and ladies tournaments run together. Um, so as an umpiring unit, as as a coaching unit, and as administrators, we've kind of started working together in the last couple of years, which has been really great for South African hockey. Um, our ladies' side have always managed to get 
funding more than the, our men's side, um, which is, you know, great for the ladies, but not so great for the men. And so um, our Olympic body hasn't supported the men for a while. And now at least they're supporting both sides again, which is really, really great. Um, I myself, um, I've, I've had to, like, like Maureen said, like, I've been held to a different standard when it came to being a head of sport or wanting to coach a first team boys hockey side at, at high school. Um, I've had to work a little bit harder and show a little bit more evidence before I got appointed to various things. So there's definitely still a, a feeling that um, that men kind of dominate the sports world. Um, so for ladies, it is definitely still a little bit more difficult. Um, and I think you know, in South Africa, we definitely lack um, ladies coaches. Um, it's really something that we need to work in. Um, from an umpiring perspective, um, I've just moved provinces. Um, I've come from Kuzuri Natal, and there I, I could umpire any game I wanted because it was based on skill level. And now I'm in the Western Cape, and all of a sudden, um, as they call it, there's a little bit of a boys club, and the boys do the boys matches, and the girls do the girls matches. So definitely for me, something to work at and something to break through here is to, to get it um, rather based on, on level of umpiring than your gender. So that's, that's something that I would like to strive and work for here down in the Western Cape and all over South Africa, if possible. Fantastic. Um, Maureen, if I could just go back to um, j just a little bit of a follow-up question to you. Uh, you spoke about the fact that uh, there were more women on the on the board, and that was a really positive thing. Um, can I just ask, and, and again, this is just because of um, anecdotal um, stories, were the men who were on that board in the top positions? So were we looking at, you know, a male chair, a male treasurer, or was it very, very much an, an equal board? It was an equal one because the chair, what we will call the president, was female, and um, the we had the supporting role of the men as treasurer um, as we as as we um, go along. And what what is what is noteworthy, however, that position of general secretary, everybody's perception of it is that it should be a woman. And over the years, I have noted, if I could recall, we have always had a, a female general secretary. And in many organizations that I've worked in, not NGOs, when you have elections, you, you know, people generally will, would, would look for a male president and then they, they will vote a, a female person as the honorable general secretary. So um, that that is, has, has been my experience. and. Uh, um, we have had men um, doing the supporting role in, in Trinidad and in the Caribbean, if I may say so, um, more so um, well in, in, entwined with the gender equality um, um, approach. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, this question really is uh, to Thomas and Stephen. Um, just talking about the sort of the club scene in your respective countries, because I think what um, what is quite clear from 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 the talks and from from uh, uh, from things that have gone gone before us is that yes, okay, gender equality and its importance is very very well recognised at international hockey level. It's filtering down to the continents. But what about the club scene? Um, are we are we seeing um, equality in the club scene, or is there still a little bit? I think Wondery um, referred to it earlier. Do you still see evidence of an old boys network in 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 some of the sort of the uh, the, the the clubs within your countries, um, Stephen? If we come to you first, um, I think it's getting a lot better. Um, in Australia, we're kind of lucky that um, it's not that bad. Um, obviously, umpiring wise. We in Brisbane have embraced a lot of the girls coming into into the competition. Um, as for coaching, um, there is quite a lot of females now breaking into the men's ranks, um, which is which is also good to see. It's different different ideas as well, so it's it's quite good. Fantastic. And Thomas, with you. Uh, I think on the club uh, level for for players, uh, there's still yeah big difference. Uh, I think. Uh, the, just uh, the budget around for for uh, male players uh, is is bigger than than for the girls team uh, probably in in every big club I think uh, or I don't want to speak for everybody but I think that's pretty uh, well well known um, that the, the the guys uh, attract also more more supporters and 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 more sponsors but I think there are there is um, yeah still some work to do but I think is there are also positive messages uh, that just came out I think 
last week a big sponsor ABN Emerald Bank who sponsors like 50 clubs in in Holland um, they they wanted to keep sponsoring uh, the clubs and but they had to uh, they wanted it to be 50 50 so 50 percent for for the men 50 percent for the women uh, throughout the club so I think that's yeah just one uh, positive message from from yeah, big a big bank and uh, well, it was pretty big news I think um, yes. but still still a lot of work to do and yeah but still I think like we said or like I said in the beginning it's about creating awareness and yeah I think that's that's yeah, being really positive yeah, I mean it's awareness and it's opportunity, isn't it? But that that was great news to come out from uh, from from the bank sponsorship. Um, okay, Vondry, um, you, you spoke about your um, um, moving across and, and and finding a different sort of set of circumstances uh, in in your new province. How have you gone about? Uh, sort of saying to those guys, look, I'm here. Um, I've, I've done mixed gender umpiring at the very, very top level. Come on, recognise me for my worth. How, how have you got your message across? No, I think I think it's a slow process. I think um, for me, I, I I rock the boat slowly. Um, so for me, it's it's really it's it's starting and um, just getting involved first. So I, I've made sure that I got involved in all all the the local leagues at the moment. And then, and then it's just talking to the right people, and um, and just being there, being present, talking to the umpires, um, connecting with different umpires, female and male, and just having those conversations. And I think slowly by having those conversations, and then understanding your understanding of the game, um, they're starting to recognise it. And for me, it's not just to get me into it, but to get all umpires in it, and to get an equal opportunity for all umpires. Absolutely. So, I, I mean, the message from you. So, so we've already we've got two very strong messages coming from this talk. We've got um, Thomas's point that awareness needs to be raised, and we've got your point that actually sometimes it's small steps to achieving big big change. Um, I wondered, um, Maureen, um, I wonder if I could come to you now um, and just ask you. You know, you you won't mind me saying you've had a long career in the game. What have, what changes have you seen over time, and can you give sort of a almost a practical example of how some small steps have led to a really big change? And if the other three of you could be thinking about that too, I'll come back to you all. Um, some of the changes that I've seen, which are quite positive for the gender equality aspect of it, it's the the mixture of the the technical table. Um, Previously, in the in the old age, I would say I would say that we, I mean, there was never taught about to have mixed tables, and right now it's it's a given that you could be appointed to either male or female on the technical side, and and I had the experience of being the tournament director for both a male and a female tournament at a slightly um world league round two. And I was in charge of both um, the male and the and the and the female um, um, section of the of the of the tournament, and you know I have that experience, you know, started to show that there was a level of of, of confidence that was being laid in people with experience and competence, not just looking at what gender are you, um, can you do the job, and 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 that is excellent. That's really where we should be heading. Um, I have noted that the coaching aspect of it, particularly in the Caribbean um, Continental Federation wise in the Pan American, that most of the coaches at the highest level are male, while we have a lot of women who are doing the developmental work. So you have the women doing the developmental work and handing over what they would have created to, um, to the male coaches who people would lay all their confidence in. And I think we need to look at that and have some level of respect and confidence that women can do it also. Absolutely. I, I mean, that if we just segue away from that for a moment, um, I mean, that that is something that, again, I think is very true and can be seen across all the continents that, uh, um, that the top the top level of coaching, you very, very, it's very rare to see a woman. And I mean, Alison Annan is a, is a notable exception to that. Um, has anybody, any of you, and, and you know, just just wave at me uh, if you've got the answer to this. Any idea why that might be the case? Thomas, you're a player. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a difficult one. Really difficult one. Um, Spotlight on you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. 
uh, I'm not sure. It's a, it's a good question. I never had a, a female coach except uh, my mother when I was young. <laughs> and, uh, but, um, and she obviously did a very good job. <laughs> I, I will tell her. I will tell her. No, um, it's a good question. I, I don't have the answer. No? And anybody else? I mean, are there any any thoughts on that at all? Because it's 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 one of those questions. I think you know maybe later on in the discussion uh, we might come back to it. But um, you know, it, it just seems so strange that these uh, these female coaches can produce, as you say, great youngsters, and then they get taken up by a by a male coach and taken on to hopefully even greater things. Um, we would so we're talking about small steps, examples of small steps. I think to, uh, I think one is how is up. Oh, Wondery, is your hand up? Uh, it's her, uh, yes. Sorry, yes. Sir. Uh, no, all good. I think I think what I've noticed in South Africa is um, we, we still have the role of the woman as the mother, and often when you get to the higher level, um, those trainings happen at night time. It happens um, those hours that, that women need to be at home and look after their own kids. So it's been really difficult for women to get into that coaching role because uh, – to, to be both at the same time is, is really, really difficult. And it, it, so far in South Africa, I mean, it, it is changing that, that the woman is becoming, the role of the woman in, in normal business is becoming as important as the man. But but so far, there's still the man that, that's the provider. So he's the one out working, providing, and the woman is at home looking after the children. So really difficult. You can get to like a school level or just above, but when it, when it gets to the, those hours you need to, to develop a provincial side or a national side, uh, just with family life, it really becomes complicated. So actually, um, the, uh, again, if we keep pulling points out of this discussion, um, it could well be that what we're actually looking at is a is a, almost a cultural or a societal change, mm -hmm. so that female coaches can maybe coach during the day, or they, there's a change in the domestic roles within the family. These are big changes, but you know small steps to those sorts of changes and, and, and we will start to see things happen. Um, Steve, we, the, the, the question was, have you, have you seen um, small steps to a sort of a, a, a notable change? Uh, uh, have you got anything um, from, from Australia or Oceania? Uh, yeah, I suppose um, as you, we moved in with the umpiring side of things, like we, we had the, um, the reserve umpire was ended up being females um, and obviously males on the female games, uh, even in the video box, which was uh, um, quite good. Um, as, as the coaching side of things, um, I think it's, it's coming slowly. Yeah. But, yeah, hopefully. Are, are they, um, I mean, within sort of coaching and umpiring courses, um, is, is there... Is there provision i mean you know are the are these courses being run at times that are suitable for the female umpires in australia are, are they courses that are sort of you know allowing access yeah definitely i think um where over here we're a little bit different i think um it's not just focused on the 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 women to look after the their kids i think it's a bit of a we, we kind of take turns i suppose if uh, if my wife was into hockey like like what I am, I'd possibly be looking after the kids as well while she's doing stuff like that. So um, I'm I'm pretty sure majority of the Aussie guys and females are exactly the same. Uh, yeah, and and it's that sort of you know it's 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 that accepting attitude that's very important for moving this 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 forward. Um, Thomas, if if I could just ask you. Um, so you, you you played in the pro league matches where you had a male and a female um, umpire. Um, I've spoken to several other players who played in those games, and the the general opinion was just, you know, they were umpires. They were highly competent umpires. The gender just didn't matter. Do you think that um, within Europe, in particular, you've reached a stage where actually quite a lot of the time it, it isn't an issue anymore? Um, no, we don't even. Uh... Yeah, discuss about it with the with the players. Or it was funny. I had the interview after the game, and uh, or, and somebody asked me yeah, how how it was with the with the female empire. And I was like, did we have a female empire? I I didn't remember. <laughs> and I think the most important thing is uh, is the quality. I mean, for players as well, we get judged about. Uh, yeah, it's about all about quality, and you have to uh, have a certain standard. Uh, certainly, if you play, uh, if you uh, are 
uh, involved with international games, uh, if you are involved with yeah, uh, important tournaments like Olympic Games or World Championships, then you have to make uh, really the right decisions at the right time because else it can cost yeah, uh, a medal or a gold medal. Uh, so yeah, the most important thing is is quality. If uh, yeah, gen gender doesn't really matter, we we actually never we had it a couple of times now already with a with a female uh, female um, empire and yeah, the quality was good. So there's no reason to discuss it or or think about it. Fantastic. Um, I'm going to ask each of you now about um, the challenges, um, but not just within your, I'm actually going to be a little bit unfair here and ask you to talk about your continent as well as your nation, because um, I know that certainly, well, ac across all of your various continents, uh, you, there, are, there are big disparities between the way that some nations deal with gender um, and equality issues and, and the way that other countries do as well. So, um, Henri, you've got a very, very diverse continent in the continent of Africa. Um, I would say that South Africa in many ways is, is um, quite advanced in, in terms of equality. But can you give us a sort of a, um, a reflection, if you like, on some of the challenges that um, equality faces within, within the sort of African continent? Yeah, I think, I think South Africa, we're quite fortunate that we are quite progressive when it comes to equality in sport. Um, there's definitely a push um, unless you're, of course, talking about rugby, because um, rugby <laughs> gets all the fans in South Africa. Um, but but the, the, what, we, what they call in South Africa the minor sport, because rugby is uh, the only sport, um, the, between the rest of the sports, I think there's, there's like fair funding and, um, and not enough, but, but fair between men and ladies. I think Africa is a little bit more difficult. Um, I remember my first ever international game. I um, it wasn't my first game of tournament. I umpired with um, a male from Egypt, and it was a ladies' game. And um, and he really struggled because um, the, their communication with women is so different. And so he just couldn't communicate with them. And so for him, it w it was not the ideal situation to be thrown into a, a ladies' game um, because he he just doesn't know how to communicate with women. And so I think it's it's important, like you said, that, that it is really small steps. Um, and each continent and each country is going to have to find little ways of, of making a difference. And it might be something small or something different to another country. Some countries might take big steps. Um, you know, we, we're very fortunate umpiring-wise in South Africa that, that we have a great panel with, with men and ladies. And, and we work to keep together closely. And there's great support of each other. So... I think umpiring wise, we can only go forward. Um, and I think definitely in the future that they will see more, more mixed umpiring panels for all our tournaments, local tournaments, which will be really great. Uh, just just going back to that match with the with the Egyptian um, umpire, did, did you speak afterwards or, or you know, how did how did you voice the difficulties? So so it was interesting. Um the 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 goal the goalkeeper in his um in his circle, so that he the circle that he was looking after, uh she wasn't liking uh the team attacking into a circle. Uh, and so she decided to to kick her kicker off um and he didn't notice it. Um so she made sure that he noticed the next thing by by taking off her helmet and throwing it into the middle of the circle. And he, he just didn't know how to deal with the whole situation. So we had to stop the game and I had to go over and deal with it. And yeah, you know, afterwards speaking, he just said, like, he just doesn't know and he, they just don't in that type of way communicate with women. And so I think if, if you're going to to have international mixed panels, though that's something that you need to be aware of. Um, and as, a, as an umpiring um, uh, group, you need to speak about it beforehand and, and know where each other's strengths and weaknesses lie. And, and maybe if I had known before, I could have stepped in a little bit earlier and helped them out earlier. But, but you don't know that until, until the situation happens. Sure. Yeah. And I, I mean, it's such an interesting point, isn't it? Because if you do get thrown into that situation, how on earth do you deal with it in a sensitive and, you know, a, a, a correct way? Um, Maureen, you must you must have lots and lots of uh, different and diverse opinions from across uh, across the PATH region. Yeah, um, in the Pan American region, I have noted because I did I did my research. Um, we have active about twenty nine countries, and when I did a survey of the administrators, the presidents, and those, 
those sorts of positions. We are really lacking there, meaning that there's the gender equality is in in many instances is not is not there, and I don't I don't know if the awareness um, is the one we have to work on, meaning that. I was listening to Stephen talk about the support. I think the support for women is important because while you may, while we keep saying that you know the woman has a lot of domestic work to or see about the children and they don't have the time to participate, there must be some um, vehicle we must use to support to support women so that you give them that encouragement to be a part of the administration, if it's administration we're talking about or coaching or the different levels, because um, if we if we don't do the awareness and the education and that flexibility part of it, we would never really achieve that gender equality, because if you look at it, um, there are some countries who there would be a mixture of male and female president as the years go on, but there are some countries that they never had a a female um, um, person who's the chair or president. And I mean, if I must say, our, our region has never had a, a president female of the Continental Federation. And that doesn't say that they are not competent people. And if I must put something in here that we have, we have had two male, but we have had a stretch of a male for, for, for many, many years. And it didn't really it didn't really occur to us that you know this is strange and it is only now that you you're looking at it whenever a meeting there's a boardroom meeting or there's something thrown on television that i look at a board my immediate thinking is okay how many women are there and that's only over the last 10 years but before i never saw anything wrong with it recently i saw a meeting where one of our sport in Trinidad and tobago what we call our sport company had a, there was a meeting held on on a, on a serious topic and the minister ironically was the only female in the room everybody else they were all male and at a high very high level um what i must say in a positive part of it is that um we have a national olympic committee president who is male and who has been pushing an actual quote of the future is female and encouraging his national olympic committee to focus on women and to have succession planning so that you could have that is what is important you have to plan if you do not feel that it, there is a competency plan and encourage awareness and education absolutely um, i sort of like to raise three separate points on that one i think the first one um is it's, it's really interesting that a few years ago the thing that we were looking at is how many women are on the board and the progression there is now how many women on the board are in positions of higher power and that's that that's something that you know maybe that is the next step that we're, we're taking on there um my, my second point is um if you know the whole world is now suffering a um a, a global um pandemic which is a horrible situation to be in but if there's a positive to come out of it it's the fact that we've actually upped the level of um, digital communication so when we talk about supporting female officials and and supporting female coaches actually the access has increased because of digitalization so people can actually have coaching um, sessions on zoom they can do um, you know sort of support and guidance and, and they don't have to leave their home to go and do that so that's probably a positive to come from the COVID I don't, I don't know how you feel about that Maureen whether that's something that you you agree with yeah um I, I do agree with it um we are in a, a, a whole the environment now and, and you know what is ironic about about the COVID and I experienced it myself. Um, so we were working from home and uh, my husband and I, we were working from home and uh, traditionally I would see about all the meals and I was working from home, he's working from home and I'm getting up and I'm seeing about meals and things and it, it, it didn't occur to me until about the second week that I'm doing two, two sets of jobs. I'm doing the work at home but I'm also preparing you know the meals and it just came naturally and then i started to talk to him about it i'm like well what do you think he said well you know he never thought about it either and if we do <laughs> it's like you're not thinking about it you're doing it and sometimes we women perpetuate it yeah. quite honestly from from the from the the young age of a child mothers perpetuate what is going to happen in particularly in the caribbean region i can speak for perpetuate that sort of um, you know, activity. 
Fantastic. Um, this is this is so interesting. I'm just I'm going to just um, dive in before I come to Steve and Thomas on this question. We've got a point from Gino from the Czech Republic. Um, and Gino says, I think in coaching there is potential to get more women involved. Um, I think Sarah's just Sarah? frozen. She's just frozen. She's let's frozen. Wait. Yeah, yeah, let's just wait for her to um, to reestablish connection. Um, let's give her just a few seconds. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to um, um, deal with the problem with Sarah. And maybe could I um, give the floor to the second? Oh, Sarah's back. Sarah's back. Wonderful. You're back. I'm so sorry. Um, I, I hardly dare to tell you that I just lent on my, um, on my, on my keypad. Um, <laughs> sorry, everybody. Are we all here? Yeah, it's just, it's just me who's sitting rubbish. Um, right. Huge apologies to people around the world. I was just talking about uh, Gino's message that had come in, um, just saying that uh, and, and it follows up on this point of support for women, uh, particularly that the point was bringing them into uh, into coaching, um, actually exposing uh, young women, girls at, a, at an earlier age to the possibilities of coaching and, and, and getting them that experience early on. And I think that's a really important point as well, is just the, the education side of things and, uh, and, and just, you know, allowing them to experience something so that they push for it more in their, as, as they, you know, because it, it has to come from both sides, would, would you say? You know, you have to provide the opportunity, but you also have to um, have the want coming from the, from the girls to get into those positions as well. Um, I'm just going to throw that at Bonnery at the moment. Is, is it, it's, you know, it's important that uh, the two sides are coming together, right? Sorry, yes, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I agree completely. Um, it is important that both sides come together from my, yeah. Yeah, you, you've got, you've, it's okay. You've got, <laughs> you've got to want to do it and you've got to have to do it is, is, my, is sort of the, uh, the reading I put into Gino's message. Okay, um, just getting back on track again completely. Uh, Thomas, um, we're, we're talking about the challenges to equality in both your own country and also across the continent. And again, just as the previous two, uh, two guests, Europe is a very, very diverse area and there are some countries who do gender equality very, very well and there are some where it's a little bit lacking, would you agree? Yeah, I think so. And it's a bit uh, cultural, I think, uh, like one we also, uh, also said. Um, <clears throat> but I can only speak for, for Belgium and, and, and Holland. I'm playing now for 10 years in Holland, so I know them very well. And there are two, uh, I think, pretty much open-minded uh, countries. Um, so I, I think there are a lot of opportunities for, for women uh, and, and for, for men. Um, I can only speak uh, yeah, for myself, uh, being, uh, being a man um, and, and not for, for girls, so maybe some will uh, disagree, but if I just look at it uh, objectively uh, from, from the outside, I think, um, I think yeah, um, there, there are a lot of opportunities for women and there are not, not, not a lot of uh, um, inequalities uh, in, in that, yeah, that I, can, I can notice in... Yeah. Perfect. Um, Stephen, so, you know, we've, we've heard great things um, about Australia and the fact that, you know, the quality agenda is, is really well developed there. But you've also got other countries within Oceania. Um, and this is probably a little bit unfair, but mm. what's, your, what's your sort of summation of where we sit with the gender equality within some of those other nations? Um, obviously, we have a lot to do with, um, with New Zealand. New Zealand have... Uh, I think they're pretty much exactly the same as us. Their their men's and their women's panel um, interact a lot. They they bump a lot of ideas and things off themselves um, with each other. Um, I'm not exactly sure about their their national league and all that. Whether they do the cross gender, 
Um, I haven't haven't really heard that yet, but um, that's not saying that they don't do that either. So, um, but yeah. Cool. Um, in terms of, um, I'm going to throw a slightly um, controversial question out here now. Um, positive discrimination. Should we be actively pushing women into leaders, leadership positions um, in an attempt to equal up boardrooms, to whether that be in a club, whether that be in a national association, um, or is there a different way of doing it? How, how do we actually address this balance? And uh, I'll head over to Maureen to start with on that one. Yeah, I think, you know, my, my perspective of things is really based on competencies and uh, I, while I think it is important that women are pushed into um, senior positions and decision-making positions where it impacts, I think it sh the, sh the, the suggestion and the recommendation would be to have proper succession planning. How do we do that? As an organization, if you're involved in an organization, you have a plan, a four-year plan, and you determine, okay, this is who do we see as the next leader, the next person that we can we can train, the next person we can expose to um, that level of competency that you require. That's the way to go. And I, I am from the financial sector and we do a lot of mentoring and training and succession planning so that we can get the leaders that are showing the competency, male or female. And if we are now talking about gender equality and you're talking about positive, it's a kind of reversed affirmation. We can do it. And uh, I, I don't think we should just put somebody there because we need a female there. It will be unfair to the organization. It will be unfair to the person also. So I think that that would be my approach. Do the succession planning, have your plan, a strategic plan over a period of time. Um, who do you see as a leader? And then you, you bring them into it. Thank you. That's a, that's a great, great answer. Um, I'm just going to throw the same question to you, Thomas, but from a slightly different perspective. Uh, if you were going for a job and it was you uh, against a, a equally competent female uh, candidate um, and you took a quick look around you at the, uh, at the workforce and you saw that there were less women than men, would you be thinking, uh-oh, positive discrimination is about to kick in here? How would you feel about that? No, not at, all, not at all. I think I think Maureen said it really well. I think it is about competence and quality, and that's the most important thing. Um, but I, I do think it's important to have, um, yeah, especially if we talk about sports, to have role models in, in key positions, uh, like Marek at the EHAF or, or Laureen as an uh, empire for, for Belgium then. And, and yeah, that is important to yeah, inspire uh, kids and inspire also women to see that it is possible to uh, yeah, to be in important position, to have important positions, uh, as well as we want to inspire uh, kids uh, being a great hockey player and 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 to grow hockey. Um, so I think I think it is important to have some diversity in in key positions. But yeah, it's it's again about quality, and I don't think it has to be pushed or forced. Absolutely. Again, another great answer. Um, I'm going to ask all of you now um, just to because what, what I what I would really like is I'd like all of the people attending this uh, this webinar to have some sort of practical thoughts that they can take back to their own countries, to their own clubs, to their own federations on steps that they can make towards progress. So whether they're small steps or whether they're large steps, I just wondered if you could each of you perhaps um, outline something that can be done that can just progress even further along the line, no matter where you are, even further along the line, a concept of gender equality, whether it be the smallest little step or the biggest cultural change. What do you think? Um, and let's go to South Africa first. Yeah, I think for, from my side, I think um, umpiring wise, I think you I agree with the, the other, with, with Thomas and Maureen, that, that you want people to feel comfortable in what they do. And just to put someone in a place because they're male or female doesn't make sense to me at all. Um, I think skill level is, is important. So looking at umpiring and umpiring in, um, in South Africa, I think for us, we need to start introducing males and females umpiring each other, having some mixed gender. Um, there is, of course, the fear that if we start doing that, 
that will lose one of the one of the genders through doing that because you might be going and feeling that one gender is stronger than the other, and so you they're getting more of the the appointment. So I think it's a, something that we're going to have to be really really careful with when we when we do start introducing mixed gender um, um, umpiring teams. It's just to make sure that you're looking after both groups. Um, and, and of course, if, if, if a female is more comfortable to umpire female games, then let her do that. Don't put it into a male game if she's uncomfortable, and the same with a male. Um, I think hockey is the same thing, but men and ladies do play it a little bit differently. Um, the men certainly um, more wide, more expansive, and the girls a little bit more congested. So being an umpire, you need to, need to be able to manage that. And, so it's a, it's a really slow process, but I think if we can start at the junior level, so starting at school, starting at clubs, and really putting an emphasis on it there to have mixed gender um, umpiring units, it would really help. And the same with coaches. Can I just ask you, and I'm going to ask Steve the same question. Um, did you learn something from your experience of doing the mixed gender pro league matches, or was it just an affirmation of everything that you'd done to that point? Yeah, oh, for... For me, it's, um, I've been fortunate enough to umpire with a lot of men back in South Africa, and I've done lots of men, men's game and ladies' game. But there is definitely a, a difference in the way that, that men approach the game and ladies approach the game and the way they play the game. Um, so as an umpire, you need to be aware of that. And stepping onto the field, you also just you just need to pre-plan how you're going to deal with the game. Um, umpiring with Steve, like, it was my first pro league game, his first pro league game, so there was a lot of pressure on us because it's our first game, and it was a, a mixed gender couple. Um, I think I think it just felt normal, it felt natural. Um, it didn't feel different. I liked how, how Thomas said um, that he didn't even notice that there was a female on the field umpiring their game, and I think that's the point where we need to get to. We are an umpiring unit. We're not a male umpire or a female umpire, and for me, we were just an umpire unit working together really, really well. Fantastic. Steve, would you agree with all of that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was obviously coming into um, the Belgium game, I didn't realise that I was actually doing the female game. It was just one of the boys from Australia that was travelling with us said, did you realise, have you actually looked at the appointments? I went, oh, no, not really. <laughs> and then when I, when I actually found out and I went, oh, OK, well, this is going to be interesting and different and obviously like Vinery said a lot of pressure on us because of obviously my first pro league game Vinery's first pro league game and then the first cross gender so it's it was a bit of a, a whirlwind so but it was it was good fun and, and you actually both became media stars overnight as well didn't you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a, a bit different. I prefer not to, but yeah. <laughs> did Did you learn anything? You know, did you come away from the from the from the matches thinking actually that's just changed my looking my, my outlook on something or not? Um, yeah, d like Vanry pretty much said it. Um, the guys are so much more physical, and um, and they the whole game is. Um, a lot wider and expanded, whereas the female, it's it's really congested and um, and tight inside the circle. So it it gave me a different view on everything, on especially for the umpiring side of things. So it was it was quite good. Fantastic. Um, staying with you, Stephen. Uh, just the same question that I uh, I asked earlier. Um, can you see um, steps that could be taken just to further? increase the, sort of the gender equality within within your own region? Yeah, I, I think it's um, obviously opportunity. Um, and maybe we, we do start at the grassroots as well. Um, I know that there's probably quite a few guys around that don't like or maybe prefer not to umpire women's games. Um, and then there's guys that will... We'll just go. It, it doesn't really matter as long as I'm on the field. It's it's still hockey. It's still still a game that they that everybody loves. So uh, yeah, it's it's pretty tough. Mm. But it's it's just sort of raising yeah. awareness of the opportunities out there, I guess. Yeah. You know these these Absol opportunities absolutely. for you to learn. Yeah. Um, uh, Maureen, I mean, you've already given us a, a great idea with with the succession planning. But other other small steps that maybe within within Trinidad and Tobago or within the wider Pan American 
uh, continents. Something that yeah. would make a tangible difference that another somebody else can get hold of and run with. I think that um, within the region, I think the, the conscious awareness, meaning that if, from, a gov- from a good governance perspex- perspective, if when we are making decisions on doing anything or we are looking to put together a committee, if we could have that conscious awareness that, okay, we need a diverse, we need diverse views. And to get diverse views, you, you cannot have, um, you should not have all of the same gender. So that awareness, that top of the mind, I think that's important. Um, and I think sometimes people do it unconsciously because they do the selection and or look for people who they um, feel comfortable with. And from the male perspective, you know, they have their male speak, um, male speak kind of thing. And it's easier to, as far as they're concerned, to get through to do this or that with, with people who they are familiar with. But I think conscious awareness of everything that we do with reference to governance and administration should push us to be always aware, okay, am I having the widest possible selection of of thought in this group of people that I'm dealing with? And that those small steps, that major awareness should help us. Absolutely. It's, it's sort of embedding the mindset isn't it and that's yeah. something that sounds like a really really big thing but actually as thomas said earlier you know actually once a mindset's in place it, it almost becomes second nature to you um yeah. heading over to, heading over to thomas then um any 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 suggestions you've got for people who are looking to improve the gender equality offering of their own setting anything that you can sort of add in there yeah i think i think um sport can can have a big impact on um on a, a society and if I look uh, at hockey, I really love uh, yeah, the values we represent. Uh, I think uh, that's one of the yeah, really important things in, in hockey. And I think uh, gender equality can yeah, also be a, a really big value that we represent and give a, a, yeah, an example to not only to everybody in the hockey community, but also uh, it can be it can impact also society. Uh, and it's, it's always, I think, if you, you want change, it takes a long time. And you have to do uh, the right things uh, for a long time, but um, yeah, I think if people are aware that uh, yeah that it can happen and 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 they do the right things and uh, yeah, hockey can have impact on on uh, yeah not only on hockey people but also on maybe the region or or uh, yeah wider uh, society. So I think it's it is important to think about and and uh, yeah try to to do the right thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one one of the things that you you actually brought up earlier, Thomas, the uh, the point that the the bank um, in their sponsorship of the several of the Dutch clubs was was um, specifying that there, there had to be a very clear gender equality policy within that club uh, before the sponsorship continued. Uh, that got picked up um, not just by other hockey clubs and certainly not just from within that uh, within within Holland, uh, but it was being picked up across across Europe. Um, it was being picked up by other sports. So it's an example of fantastic work uh just as you know a small statement out on twitter has actually made people think about things and that's that's a fantastic thing so i just wonder we're, we're sort of coming towards the end of our of our panel discussion i wondered if um all of you could just think about um a fantastic example that you've come across whether it be within a club a school a national association um, a fantastic piece of work that's been done that really promotes gender equality um, and it could be something as simple as somebody standing up and saying something very strongly to uh, an initiative or a project or something along those lines so um who should we start with uh, <laughs> let's let's go to trinidad and tobago <laughs> um i would say a person that i really appreciate uh, his push is the olympic the trinidad and tobago olympic um committee president brian lewis um, this is a, a man who is partnering with the entire he for she um, female first philosophy, and he's not just saying it, he's actually working on it. So he will represent, he, he, he as a man, represent, and he's a, he, he's, he came from a rugby background, and, and the fact that he is representing the approach, and he's pushing the approach, and he, he is encouraging and you know he, he is educating and and that is his whole drive 
and, and I think that is excellent. And I, uh, I always respect the fact that from a male perspective, he, he is pushing it. And not only that, he goes to the IOC meetings and he talks about it also, which, which I respect. He doesn't only do it in his little corner of the world, but he also outreaches to the international body. He's not afraid to say it. And I'm sure sometimes he would get some flack from his contemporary, um, his, his, his male contemporary people, because then you're looking at your evading now this whole um, this whole good old boy network. And who is doing it? One of us. And I think um, that that small that step, I think that's a big step. Female first, and he's seeing it every day. That's fantastic to hear. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's head across to uh, to South Africa. Andre, have you got any fantastic examples for us? I just think in our in our schools itself, um, there's a lot of education on, on gender equality. Um, there's a lot of work being done um, by by various administrators, and I think for the for the youth coming uh, coming up, it's it's really a good thing. And 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 you can already see it. You can really see a movement happening. And it's not about the one is more important than the other. Both are important. And I think that's the message we need to get across. We're not here to try and uplift the female hockey umpires or hockey coaches or whatever. It's just to try and say that we all are the same, whether we male or female. Um, uh, we want to be seen as the same. And so, yeah, so I think in, in the South African school system, there's really a, a big, big push at the moment, and it, it's really reaping the rewards. Fantastic. Thank you. Thomas, so a, an example of something that you've just thought, wow, that's that's very, very innovative or it's great or it's brave or it's courageous yeah if i th if i think about somebody i think i, I need to mention uh, sophie here she's a belgium hockey player uh, used to play for the belgium national team and was one of the best players uh, for a long time in in belgium she always uh, uh, trained with uh, with the boys uh, when she was younger and uh, yeah she al also in the first team she sometimes trains with the with the men's first team and she was still one of the best so uh, and she uh, yeah, at one moment, I think, uh, yeah, maybe seven, eight years ago, she started to give um, camps or clinics for girls only, and she invited uh, the girls. So they get a secret invitation uh, that they were invited to the camp. And that was at a time where girls maybe didn't uh, had the same possibilities as men or not the same quality trainings as men. And she thought, uh, I think, one of the first. So for me, she's a, a front runner. And she thought girls are also uh, entitled to have uh, quality uh, trainings, and uh, and she started with it. And I think, if, if I think about gender equality, I think she was one of the forefront. And I think now it's much much better than ten years ago, and and the quality of trainings for the girls and the men are are uh, the same. But uh, yeah, she she was one of yeah, I think one of the first that really uh, was a f yeah a front runner. So uh, yeah, I, I have to think. Uh, uh, about her, her, if I think about uh, inspiration. Fantastic. Thank you very much for that. Um, Steve, same question to you. So, something that's just encapsulates for you, if you like, some fantastic work that's been done in the field. Um, mine would probably be um, in a different sport, I think. Um, in Australia, obviously, where we also play um, baseball and, and um, myself and, and both my kids, my son and my daughter, both play it. Um, and the, the female side of things, they actually are dominating a lot more in the, in the junior ranks. Um, they um, are almost kind of pushing the boys out of the road because they're more determined to, to beat the guy. So it's, it's kind of, it's nice like, uh, to see my daughter do that things and, and kind of beat, beat some, of the, some of the boys at, at their own game. Um, it kind of, it's kind of just nice to, nice to see, and hopefully, Absolutely. yeah. And it's the sort of thing that that will will spread and grow, and 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 that's the same. All the examples you've given, you know, these these are all ways of raising awareness and showing what is possible. Um, I'm going to, um, so I, I'm, yeah, I'm going to open up to the uh, to the various people, who, the, the audience here today, for any any comments. But I'm just going to read this one out. Um, it comes from Jean Serge uh, Enanac from I think he's from Cameroon, um, and Jean Serge says the issue of gender is at the heart of the priorities of our government's agenda. This government's commitment to ensure gender parity in the management of public affairs influences all sectors. The sports world is not left out. 
in Cameroon, and this is uh, this is what we're talking about. You know, the difference between, say, for example, uh, South Africa, and then further up the country, we've got Cameroon. The majority of hockey is male. Um, and the involvement of women is starting to be felt, but it's not easy to integrate um, into the current mentality of some of the leaders. Um, so what, what his point is, is that, yes, OK, so they're starting, but it's that they're very, very much at the sort of on the bottom rung of that that, that ladder heading towards gender equality. Um, and I think if we were to sort of, um, you know, sum, sum up some of the things we've heard today, uh, it, it is the fact that awareness needs to be raised opportunities need to be presented um, and there's a there's a level of education to be to be given to show people that uh, you know gender equality isn't just desirable it's actually incredibly profitable for everybody as well um i just wondered before i hand over to to the uh, to the, the various um, members of the audience whether you could sum up for me um in one line or slightly more what a perfect um, definition of equality, gender equality, is for you, or how it can, how how can that best be shown in our hockey world? Um, and I'll start. I'll start. I'll, I'll give. I'll give my opinion just to kick it all off. So for me, a little boy and a little girl both start out on their hockey journey together, and at the end of their hockey journey, they both achieved whatever it was they wanted to achieve. So something along those lines from you. Um, Thomas is thinking hard, so I'll come back to him in a minute. <laughs> Uh, Maureen. <laughs> okay. Um, so if I give an example of what you are looking at, um, I mean, for me, it's the same construct that, that defines human rights, um, that respect and equal opportunity for women, girls, boys, and men of any race, religion, ethnicity or sexual orientation. That's that's how generally I sum up, you know, gender equality. It, it, it is really a right. It is really the respect. It is really the equal opportunity. So if I can see um, in, in, in the next few years, a president, a female president of the International Olympic Committee, we have already had a female president of the FIH, although it's just once. And, and that type of leadership and that type of of growth, I, I, it would really be amazing to me. You know, don't just say it, let's do it. Fantastic. Let's not just say it, let's do it. Steve. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know, actually, and maybe... <laughs> I'm still thinking. I'm still thinking. Right. I'll, I'll come back to you. What more into taking all the words? OK. Uh, who yes. doesn't want to be last? <laughs> Thomas, we'll come to you next. Yeah, I think Maureen uh, said it uh, said it beautif beautifully, but it's. I think for me it's more than gender equality. It's just uh, equality uh, all in one, if it's race or um, gender or yeah, sexual orientation or it doesn't matter. We're all a person, so I think it's important uh, yeah, you do what you love and you have the opportunity to do what you love. And uh, in the end, uh, yeah, that's that's the most important thing. Perfect. OK, who doesn't want to be last? <laughs> <laughs> OK, Alex. one more. Come on. <laughs> um, for me, uh, I, want, I want umpires not to be seen as male and female anymore. I want them to be seen just as a hockey umpire. And when you step out onto the field, whether it's for a men's game or a ladies' game, you're just the umpire. I don't want people coming off the field saying that lady or that guy. Um, it's just that that umpire, whether they're frustrated with you or not. Um, and and from from little, everybody just to have the same opportunities. And certain people will develop better than others. And and ultimately, if you're competent competent enough, you can move through the ranks. If you if you're not competent yet, you stay in the level you're at until you're competent to move to the next level. And it's just based on your skill level and and your competency rather than whether you're a male or a female. Brilliant, Steve. Is there anything left for you to say? I, I think it's all pretty much done. <laughs> yeah, I, I pretty much agree Steve, with them, Steve agrees with you all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's just easy. <laughs> Um, I think, Steve, actually what's happened is that you've translated all your thoughts into Gino's head because Gino has said, I think, what you would like to say. Uh, Gino from the Czech Republic has said, my dream would be that we do not need webinars to achieve gender balance. 
Yeah, because it would be the same as breathing air, which is a fantastic point to make. We just mm -hmm. do it without thinking and talking about it. She does, uh, Gina also goes on to say thank you for setting up this session. So that's 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 fine. Um, cool. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, I'm, I'm going to open it now to, uh, to for any comments from uh, from the people who are listening. Um, I guess, Brian, I hand back to you for that bit, do I? Yes. Uh, so, yes, we're nearly uh, coming to the end of this first webinar. Um, if you have any questions till now, feel free to ask them. Otherwise, uh, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention. I personally think it was a very interesting discussion. I hope that you've also enjoyed it. Again, we were nearly uh, 70 today, so we nearly reached a record of participation to our FIH any development series. This is amazing. So thank you to you all. Let me also give a special thanks to Marike, Valerie, Sarah, and to our guests, Maureen, Vanry, Tom, and Steve for whom it is nearly 1 a.m. who gave us a bit of their time to share their experiences and advices with us. This is very much appreciated. A huge thank you to you all. And again, if you have any question after that, or any suggestions of possible area to discuss in the future, feel free to send an email to Valerie. Her email address is available on the meeting chats. So if that's okay for everyone, I wish you all the best to you all. Stay safe and see you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Fantastic. Bye. Bye-bye.